Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Any Narrates. Here we like to review stories that beautiful people, like you listening, post on the internet. Today, we got a story with the following topic. Crazy mother-in-law does this with my hair because she wants only sister-in-law to have long hair at the wedding and hubby sides with her. It does not end well for them. I, 25 female, got married a couple of months back to my boyfriend of three years, Sack. I'm using a fake name for privacy reasons. He's the same age as I am. We met through some common friends in college, but didn't start dating until after we had graduated. Zach is very close to his family, especially to his mom and to him. Her word is as good as the last word in most of his life's decisions. His mom, Patty, 53 female, was a stay-at-home mom and had brought up both her kids on her own practically because their father was barely at home while they were growing up. So it was mainly her taking care of the kids and she had a huge influence on both their lives and now that he's passed away, the hold she has on them is even stronger than before. Zach also has an older sister, Amy, 27 female, and she got married a couple of days back. It was at her wedding that this fiasco happened and now I'm looking at a divorce within less than a year of my marriage. Just to make it clear, I've never ever had any issues or whatever with my mother-in-law and I used to think that she actually liked me. She was very nice to me when we met and even after marriage, she was cordial with me whenever we'd meet. Zack and her would meet almost every other weekend because he'd visit her but I was busy with my own life, so I wouldn't visit so frequently unlike him. I would sometimes visit my own parents but that would be once or twice a month and they were cool with it too. The only complaint Patty had with me and I'd promise her every time that I'd come by more often but to be honest, Zach's frequent visit to his parents house seemed excessive to me but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to seem like I was making an issue out of it or whatever. So that was the only thing that Saka's mother and I deferred on, but other than that, we had a good relationship. That changed last week when Zack and I drove out of town to the hotel where Amy was getting married. The last time I'd seen Patty was almost two months back because I'd been busy with work and before that, I'd had a bout of the stomach flu and was in bed for weeks. We'd seen each other on video calls occasionally. Whenever she'd call Zack to talk about the wedding, but that was about it. And during those times, I would always have my hair up. So she got quite the shock when she saw me in real life after almost two months and my hair was a lot longer than it used to be. Truth be told, I've never been one for long hair. But I started growing it out this year and I didn't get to cut it short every other month like I used to earlier. Until two months ago, my hair was still just a little below my shoulders but now it's significantly longer and can almost reach my waist. And since I've had it straightened, it appears even longer. She saw me, hugged me, and then the first thing she said after greeting me was that something needed to be done about my hair. I was very confused when she said that because I had no idea what she meant by that. But she explained that since Amy was the one getting married, it should be her with the longest hair or else everyone would be distracted by my hair instead because it's a lot more beautiful. I'll admit, I do have nice hair, but I didn't think that's such a huge deal. I have very pretty blonde hair and haven't ever had to dye it to get the perfect shade, which is great I guess, but it's not something anyone's ever said would be distracting. Amy herself has pretty great hair, so I didn't even know why this thing was such a big deal to my mother-in-law. But Zach agreed with her when she said that and Amy just stayed quiet when they started suggesting haircuts for me and salons near the hotel where I could go get my hair cut and styled properly before the wedding. I let them discuss for a while because I was stunned at how fast that conversation had turned from Hi, how have you been? to You need to chop off your long hair. But when I composed myself, I cut them both off and said that I had no intention of getting my hair cut right now. And if it was such a big deal to them, then I would just have my hair up in a bun. I intended on having my hair down for the event, but since they didn't like that idea, 
The most I could do for them was to have it up in a bun or something similar, but a haircut was not happening. I thought it was pretty generous and reasonable of me to even dignify such an absurd demand and believe that the conversation about my hair would end there, but instead, it went on and Patty even dragged Amy into it, who had been quiet all the time. Amy has shoulder length hair, so Patty wanted to get my hair cut a little shorter than hers, which is the length I had for most of my life, but now I didn't want that anymore, and if I got my hair cut for it to be shorter than Amy's, I'd end up losing a lot of length, which hurt to even think about, because I'd spend a lot of time growing it out and taking good care of it, so I'd become kind of attached to my long hair now. I like how it looked with my current hair length and didn't want such a huge and sudden change, so I told them both that this wasn't happening, but Zack and Patty kept insisting that I'd be upstaging the bride if I didn't do so. Apparently, they were afraid that if I didn't cut my hair short, then all people would be talking about was my hair, and I would end up getting all the attention and compliments, which was just a hilariously ridiculous thing to even be scared of. I've been to a lot of events in the recent past, and I can assure you guys, I've never managed to stop any of them with the sheer power and beauty of my hair, so I don't understand what the fuss was about. I told them I wasn't cutting my hair, and that was final so both of them shot up with sour looks on their faces. I thought that would be the end of that, but then, the next day, just 24 hours before the wedding, Patty decided to put gum in my hair. So what happened was that Patty, Zach, Amy, her bridesmaids, and I were all sitting in her room and chatting. Patty and I were sitting on the couch, and all of a sudden, I felt her arm going around me, and something in my hair. I jerked my head away instinctively, and checked my hair to see if there was something in it, and unfortunately, she'd stuck a wad of gum in my hair. She tried to tell me that it had been an accident, but I know you just don't accidentally put gum in someone's hair just the day after they refused to get their hair cut. We ended up arguing about it, and she kept insisting that it had been an accident, and then she moved on to saying that this was for the best anyway, because I would look better with shorter hair. I had a total meltdown over it, and kept yelling at her, but Zack intervened. However, instead of siding with me and telling Patty off for what she'd done, he decided to tell me that his mother was right and that I was making a big deal out of nothing. It's just hair, and I just have to cut it off for a wedding. It's not like I can't grow it back again. I wanted to explain to him that even if I did grow it back again, I'd lose months worth of hair that I'd been growing out, and I didn't want my looks to change right now. I was about to explain it to him, but I was just so hurt that Zack had chosen to side with his mother that I couldn't help myself and just burst into tears. Then I stormed out of the hotel room and went back to my own, where I waited for 10 minutes or so, but when Zack didn't show up, I grabbed my purse and my bag and then left the hotel in tears. I was disappointed, but I had to do something about the gum in my hair, so I searched for a trustworthy hair salon nearby and then headed there. Once I got there, I told them about the gum through tears, and they were very nice to me. They got me some tea to calm me down, and then got to remove the gum from my hair. Once they were done, they gave me a blow dry, and my hair looked better than ever in no time. I was significantly happier while leaving the place, but as soon as I got into my car, I remembered my bags in the trunk and got really depressed thinking about what Zack had done. I was mad at Patty, that's for sure, but more than that, I was disappointed in Zack because he had chosen to take his mother's side over mine when he knew for a fact that his mom had screwed up and done something cruel to me, all over some petty argument about hair. So I was really upset and sat in my car and cried for a while before I started thinking about his reaction more and more and went from crying to being angry. He'd said that it was just hair and it wasn't such a big deal but to the wrong person. Because I wasn't the one losing my head over hair. His mother was, and she'd been crazy enough to try and ruin my hair on purpose, but he'd still support her over me. Even worse, he didn't even bother to come after me to check how I was doing while I waited in my room, and that, I couldn't forgive him. To piss me off even more, Amy texted me and told me to come back and not create such a fuss over just hair 
and that it wasn't worth it to walk out on such a huge family thing over some petty argument. For so long, she hadn't involved herself in this disagreement, but when she did choose to say something, she chose to say the absolutely wrong thing to me. I didn't expect much from Patty and Amy, because I'd always known that, if it came down to it, they'd screw me over in a heartbeat if it served their own interest, and that's exactly what had happened here. But it was different for Zack. He was my husband, and he wasn't supposed to act like this when it came to be, so his behavior was what had taken me by surprise. But sitting in the car that day, I decided that I wasn't going to forgive that and would make sure that I get back at them all for how they made me feel. So instead of going back home, I went back to the hotel with a plan in my head. As soon as I went back, I headed to Amy's room and everyone was still there, but things had become a little more somber. So I decided to put my plan in action and apologize to Patty first. I said that I was sorry for overreacting and throwing such a temper tantrum over something as petty as this. She seemed taken aback by my return and then my apology, but graciously accepted it, without bothering to acknowledge her own fault. Then I apologized to Zack, which was a lot harder because he was even more holier than though compared to his mother. He said that he was glad that I had finally come around and apologized to him and his mother for creating a scene and disrespecting them among so many people. He even joked about how he'd been thinking about leaving had I not come back in a few hours and admitted my mistake, which made it very hard for me to not slap him right there. And finally, I approached Amy and said that I didn't intend to ruin her wedding, which was obviously a lie, and I had every intention of doing just that. The three of them had been terrible to me for the last two days, so whatever I was about to do at their wedding seemed like a fair deal. The next day, everything went well during the vows and I was super nice to all of them throughout. I'd even done my hair up in a tightly wound bun to make sure that nobody would be talking about my hair at all. Then when people started with their speeches, I took the opportunity to grab the mic after the best man's speech and took the floor to everyone's surprise because this wasn't a part of the plan. I then went on to tell everyone present there about how this was a special day for Amy and congratulated her and her husband on their marriage. But then I went on to talk about how her husband had better watch out now that he was married because he would no longer be his own boss and his own family would not be his first priority anymore. he just sign up for a lifetime of being controlled by his wife and in-laws. I'd said this in my most laid-back tone and pretended it was a huge joke. So there were some scattered laughs, but Amy, Patty, and Zack all looked annoyed at me. It didn't bother me though, and I went on to talk about the thing with my hair. How Patty had tried to force me to cut it off by putting gum in there. Zack and Amy had even defended their mother because apparently it was just hair, and it shouldn't have mattered to me so much. But it was fine for them to make a big deal out of it and pretend that I was the villain because I didn't want to cut my hair for one day. I even told them about how Zack and Amy would constantly visit their mother, but for some reason, Patty would also try to get me to visit just as often. As if I didn't have a life of my own, and even though my own parents were okay with me not visiting every other week, she wasn't, and would frequently try to make me feel guilty about it too. By the time I got to that part, nobody was laughing and everyone could tell that this was serious now. I wished them good luck once more especially her husband because he definitely needed and then I left the wedding venue and drove back to the hotel which was a little distance away. I collected my stuff and then headed to my house. I called my parents and asked them to help me pack my things so I could move in with them temporarily and they agreed. I explained everything to them that day itself and by the end of the day I'd moved in with my parents. It's been a week since then and I haven't spoken to Zack yet. I'm considering divorce because what else can I even do at this point? I'm just disappointed that we couldn't even make it work for even a year. I haven't heard from Patty either, which is strange because I thought that she'd have a lot to say about this, but she's been suspiciously quiet this entire time. The only person I've spoken to is Amy because she reached out to me a couple of days back and told me that while I tried my very best to ruin her wedding, 
it didn't work because after my dramatic exit, everyone just went back to normal. I highly doubt that's true though, because I received texts from several of her cousins who claim otherwise, and apparently there had been a lot of whispering and gossiping right after I left, but Amy wanted to show me that she was unbothered. She told me that her family supported her which was, again, not true, because then her relatives wouldn't be texting me and telling me about how bold my speech was and that they liked how I called Patty out because she had been a bit of a pain to deal with for most of them. It just felt sad but then she said that she now wanted an apology from me because even if she did agree to the fact that Patty and Zach had taken things too far with what they'd done, she hadn't played much of a part in this and that what I'd done to her was really unfair and mean. She accused me of taking out my anger and frustration on her when I was actually mad at her brother and mom, but it was her wedding that I had screwed up with my speech. So now, she wanted me to publicly apologize to her on social media and make sure that I mention how wrong it had been for me to take that speech at her wedding when it wasn't even her fault. I don't understand what to do now because I don't really think that Amy was completely free of any fault. She could have spoken up for me, but she didn't. And then she tried to downplay how bad the situation was by trying to gaslight me into believing it wasn't a big deal when I left her room after Patty stuck the chewing gum in my hair. So I don't know if this is now my fault or not, or if I owe her an apology. Am I the A who forgiven a speech that exposed my mother-in-law, sister-in-law and husband at my sister-in-law's wedding just for revenge? Okay. So, I've decided not to apologize. The general consensus on the post was that she didn't deserve an apology because she had been just as complicit in what my in-laws had been up to, so there was no need for me to say that I was sorry, especially when I didn't feel it. I've also filed for divorce because most of you said that I should speak to a lawyer ASAP and then get myself separated from this man because, evidently, his mother is a lot more important to him than me or our marriage. It felt weird to be talking to a lawyer to separate from him because it just felt like yesterday that we were exchanging vows and how we would be together until death do us part. But none of that lasted I suppose. It was a lot easier to go through it though. Once I remembered how I'd been sitting in the hotel room all by myself right after he defended his mother after she'd stuck the chewing gum in my hair and then I'd storm out but he didn't even care enough to check up on me. He'd been joking about divorce when I came back, so that should have been enough for me to stop feeling anything for him at all. Him and his mother still haven't contacted me, even though it's been one week and a couple more days since the wedding, but it's fine because I'm sure they have nothing to say to me anyway. I've blocked Amy because I'm not interested in hearing what she has to say on this matter. She didn't say anything against her brother and mother when she had the chance, but now she wants to talk about what's right and what's not. I am glad her wedding day was ruined because of me. She deserved it. It's been almost 12 days since the day of the wedding, and this morning, I went over to my old house one last time to collect some of my things and serve my husband with the divorce papers. When I showed up, Zach opened the door to me, but he didn't greet me and didn't say a word, but just went back to sitting on the couch and reading today's paper. I walked up to him and then handed him the divorce papers. He went through them without changing his expressions and then grunted in response, which meant that he'd read them and that he didn't care enough to say anything about it. So that was my response. I gathered the things I'd come over to take back home and once I was done, I drove back home. I left the documents on the coffee table and that was it. No more discussion. Not even an apology, but I wasn't expecting it either. This is it, I guess. It was okay while it lasted, but this is the end of the road for us. I just hope that the divorce isn't too complicated or drawn out because I'd hate that. So, the good news is that Zach isn't contesting the divorce. The bad news? Most people I know are judging me for not being able to make my marriage last for even a year. It's all pity for me and everyone keeps saying that I'll be alright soon which just makes me feel worse about this. It's not helping even one bit, but I can't tell them that because I don't want to sound ungrateful. So, I just have to deal with the sad and pitiful reactions that I'm getting whenever I tell people that I'm getting divorced. I don't think that this is affecting Zach at all, 
because I have heard from a couple of our common friends that for him, it's business as usual. He's going to parties, having fun, and living it up like he was before. Looking at his social media, people wouldn't even be able to tell that this guy is in the middle of a divorce with his wife, who he was married for less than a year. Even some of the people who have met him in person have told me that he's doing just fine and there's no traces of sadness or stress in his face. So, maybe either he really doesn't give a crap about me and never did, or maybe he's just really good at masking his true feelings. I'm guessing it's a bit of both, because even during the medication, we've met thrice so far. He doesn't seem to care much and has a very nonchalant vibe about him, as if this isn't the same for him as it is for me. He even told his lawyer once that he just wants this to be over and wrap this up as soon as possible because he can't bear to waste more of this time with his B-word. The B-word being me, of course. So that was pretty hurtful, and I objected to that, so he got some flack for it. But after we left that session, I realized that I was actually feeling relieved that he didn't care at all. This just meant an easier time for me without dealing with some long drawn out divorce where he's extremely emotional and wants me to stay. This is better than that, so I'll take it. Yeah, emotionally, it might suck that he doesn't care. But practically speaking, it's much better for me. Alright guys, that was a wrap up for today's story. Thank you very much for listening. Please go ahead and smash that like button for me. And subscribe for more stories like this one. Thanks again guys. We will be seeing you in the next one.